tragic were the events unfolding in Belarus. After the start of fascist aggression, Stalin created a special mechanism, the Soviet Information Bureau, June 26, 1941. The next step of director of the information war Stalin was a historic speech to the nation on July 3, 1941. Comrades, citizens, brothers and sisters, men of our army and navy, I am addressing you, my friends. In the address to the nation was a fundamentally new point, using the orthodox treatment brothers and sisters. It's no coincidence that after that in Russia the Patriarchate was restored, eliminated by Peter the Great who was heavily influenced by the British Empire and, in the words of the outstanding Russian philosopher Nikolai Danilovsky, he loved and hated Russia at the same time. Here's one of the key quotes of Stalin's speech from July 3, 1941. That is, therefore, about the life and death of the Soviet state, the life and death of Soviet peoples, for the people of the Soviet Union to be freed or to fall into slavery. It is necessary for the Soviet people to realize this and to cease being carefree. They must mobilize themselves and reorganize all their work on the new war footing with no mercy for the enemy. Thus, Stalin turned to orthodoxy to defeat fascism. This is what allowed winning the war. And after the war, Stalin tried to introduce the geopolitical ideas of Nikolai Danilovsky, Nikolai Trubetskoy and Pyotr Savitsky, Henry Kissinger wrote an excellent book, called Diplomacy 1994. In this book, he gave a brilliant characterization of Stalin. Stalin merged hard methodical in work, digested still in the Trilisi spiritual seminary, with relentless adherence to a strict Bolshevik worldview. Unlike Hitler, he had incredible patience. Like none of the leaders of democratic countries, Stalin was ready at any moment to take a scrupulous study of the correlation of forces. A true monster in matters of foreign policy, Stalin was, however, essentially a realist, patient, shrewd and uncompromising Cardinal Richelieu of his time. Stalin, a great ideologue, actually put his ideology at the service of realpolitik. When it comes to foreign policy, Stalin showed himself the master of cold calculation. After the Nazi invasion and the betrayal on the Western Front, Organized by British intelligence agents in the Red Army, Stalin took the right decision in that situation. He created and headed the Supreme Command and himself became the Minister of Defense, concentrating in his hands all the threads of military and public administration. When he received, via his personal intelligence, information about the early development of Operation Franken by Winston Churchill, Stalin took preventive measures. With a secret decree by the Council of People's Commissars, SMERSH short for death to spies was created on April 19, 1943. Military Counterintelligence 
On April 21, Stalin signed the statute on SMERSH. Was this point? The Directorate of Counterintelligence and KOSMERSH is the deputy of the Minister of Defense, reports directly to the People's Commissar, and performs only his orders. Thus, SMERSH began to obey Stalin, who was Minister of Defense. Previously, special departments in the army were included in the structure of the NKVD. SMERSH became an effective instrument for Stalin during the operations of information counteraction. The activities of SMERSH are characterized by obvious successes in the fight against foreign intelligence. SMERSH was the most effective intelligence service during the Second World War. From 1943 until the end of the war 186 quizzes were conducted. In the course of these games on our territory, 400 staff employees and Nazi agents were revealed and dozens of tons of cargo were seized. Thanks to SMERSH channels, Stalin began to receive accurate information about the plans of the information war against the Soviet Union, which helped to defeat fascism. Despite all the machinations of British and American intelligence services,